the 1988 Tony Awards. Brought to you by Prell Concentrate. We'll continue following station identification. Thank you, folks. Welcome back. You know, we, uh, we always like to set aside one day of our working week, if you can call it that, <laughs> to uh, get out of the building with a uh, camera crew and, and go looking for interesting people and places to visit around New York and, and also around the nation. Sure, it costs a lot of money, but, but we make up for it by cutting corners on the sprinkler system and other safety features around the studio. <laughs> Here now, boys and girls, are some highlights from those little excursions. Hope you enjoy them. And your license plate, Joe, is? A cool 75. Uh, a cool 75, does that pertain in any regard to you? Um, I guess you can say it does in one way, because I am pretty cool. Consider yourself to be a cool, <laughs> I'm a cool person. And, and uh, how would you demonstrate that coolness? Are you, are you being cool now? <laughs> Not really, I'm pretty nervous right now. Really, you don't act nervous at all? Well, that's part of the coolness, Emma. <laughs> Attention all employees of Hoover Dam and all tourists. We have a red level emergency. Repeat, a red level emergency. Please push and shove your way to the nearest emergency exit. The name of the store is Just Bulbs, and that's exactly what we sell, Just Bulbs. Besides bulbs, what do you have here? Nothing. How about shades? Could you get shades here? No, we are Just Bulbs. Bulbs. If you want shades, maybe go to a place called Just Shades. We sell nothing. But... What, uh, what is the name of the store? Just Shades. And uh, what, what can you get in here? What can you get in here? Only shades. That's why our name is Just Shades. But seriously, what, what can you get besides shades here? Give me a pair of those gloves, if you will. A pair of gloves for you? Yeah, if you don't mind. Uh, you can't be too careful these days, Kathy. I, I mean, who would know that better than you? I will need you to remove the cigar. All right, all right. Okay. Do you have a special tool to remove that with? Uh, I'm sure I could find I'll, one. I'll just put it right here in this ashtray. <laughs> I'll show me some of this stuff. What's this do? <clears throat> oh, God! I'm sorry, Molly. Oh, jeez! <laughs> If you have any sensation or any discomfort, you let me know. Okay. Let's establish a signal. What would be a good signal? All you have to do is raise this hand. I'll raise this hand. Yes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and begin. Fine. Okay. You having discomfort? No, it's a joke. Okay. I'm just testing the system. Okay. Oh, sorry, Molly. <laughs> You gotta think about boots or something. You ever consider galoshes, maybe? Hey, if, if I came along, would you would, would you buy me pancakes? Sure. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, good luck, kids. Oh, thank you. All, all my best. Thank They're having their reception at the International House of Pancakes. Well, to each their own, huh? Yeah. What is this exactly? Whoop! <laughs> Get out of here. It seems like, uh, at least at the Inventors' Convention, that the better inventions are coming from Mexico City, and this is uh, Roberto Mansi Weiss and uh, Pedro Cruz, whom we know is going to interpret for us what is uh, uh, the invention we're interested in, according to the pamphlet, Life Detector, to avoid being embalmed or buried alive. Could, could you ask Roberto, um, does this happen a lot? Uh, yes, uh, he, he told me to tell you that he was buried alive three times, and this, he, he got a little worried about it. Uh, one final question. I can understand being buried alive once, you know, sure, everybody's going to make a mistake. 
or even twice, you know, if somebody's looking the other way, they close the lid. But uh, three times, how, how has it had happened to him three times? It, 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 this is something that he can explain. It just a run of bad luck then. Just to run about. I walked around my junior year in high school with a face about uh, one and a half times. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> uh, right. Colleen's brother. Yeah. Yeah. She wrote me this letter, and uh, on Fridays I do what I can to go around and, and answer most of my correspondence. And uh, I wanted to talk to her about the letter. Uh, you, you have any idea where we could get a hold of her? Does she work around here? She works at Sears in Hicksville. Well, we're going to try and go over there and talk with her uh, in person, but as long as we're here and you're here, uh, could you show us around the place and maybe show us some of your sister's stuff? What, a closet? Yeah, take a look in her closet and that kind of thing. You go through her checkbook and her purse. Yeah, right. Oh, just the closet. Okay. Okay, let's go. Very nice. This is where Colleen uh, spends most of her time when she's at home? Yep. All right, and here's uh, her bed and we have some socks. Tiny little feet, huh? Yeah. So a lot of high-heeled shoes, a lot of dress shoes. Now, there's a pair of running shoes. Yep. Loafers. Okay, boys, load it up. This is uh, Sears in Hicksville. Hi. Uh, are you are you Colleen? Are you Colleen Boyle? Yes. Did you write this letter, Colleen? <laughs> See, what's the deal with the sneakers? I don't think you or Bryant would host their shows wearing high tops. <laughs> about you. Colleen Boyle. Uh, you do me a favor. Stop making that annoying noise. Come here. Come here. You have a lovely Stationary room. Though, you have right? a nice room. You didn't go in my room. We were in you? your room. Ask me a question you about your you room. You didn't go in like and see my. <laughs> Listen, this guy right here was sitting on your bed. Ooh. <laughs> Change the sheet. Sometime last summer, it was announced that uh, General Electric was going to be buying out and taking over the uh, RCA Corporation. And we thought, what the heck, let's just drop in and, uh, you know, say hello to see how it's going. And, uh, you know, they, they can't uh, object to that, can they? Just go on in. I'll just go on in and see what happens. Hi, how are you? I'm Dave Letterman. Nice to meet you. Right, what is ask, your name? I'm going to ask you to turn the cameras off, please. Okay, we just wanted to drop off I'm this basket you. of fruit. Okay. Would is you it, cut the cameras, please? It's a gesture of goodwill. Will you We're, cut the cameras, please? We have to talk to the director right over there, Mr. Gurney. <laughs> just, uh, director, uh... It's that special GE touch. Ladies and gentlemen, hang on to something. It's now time for Stupid Pet Tricks. Here we go. <laughs> As always, please let me remind you, this is only an exhibition. This is not a competition. Please, please, I beseech you, no wagering. We don't want the authorities to shut this dump down, do we? Our first participant tonight, Mr. Michael Liang. Michael, where are you, sir? <laughs> Michael, how are you? Michael Liang. Nice to see you, Michael. Where are you from, sir? Sacramento, California. Sacramento, California, the capital of the uh, Golden State. And here you have your pet. Joey. Joey. What kind of dog is Joey? Joey's a Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniel. And do they make really nice pets? Yeah, he's yeah. a pretty lovely Very dog. Very sweet dog. Hi, Joey. How you doing, buddy? Kiss and how, how old is uh, Joey? He's oh, almost two. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Joey could use a mint. <laughs> well. Here you go. Um, all right, uh, Michael, you and uh, Joey you have a little trick. I guess it involves the television set there. Tell us about it. Right. Joey only sings to the nightly news thing. To the theme of the NBC Nightly News, right. Joey will sing. Right. Did you teach him this? No, he, it's something he just picked up on his own. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, anything I can assist you with here? No, I think you got right, the monitor. We have a monitor yeah. there, and uh, Joey will now sing to the Come on, nightly Joe. news theme. Right here. Sit, only Tom sit. Brokaw on the only nightly Tom news? Only Tom Brokaw. Okay. The monitor comes on. First of all, we have just random television programming, changing the channels. The Browns live there. Mm -hmm. they... All right. How many pounds of the dog's not interested in any of this. No, it doesn't look like all right. it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, my gosh. Ah! <laughs> yeah, listen. To, you can't hear it, Dave. Oh, that's all right. I, I, uh, <laughs> we get the idea. It's lovely. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Joy. Come on, Joe. All right, there we go. 
You're going to see it in uh, slow motion, instant replay. Okay, here is the replay of Joy singing to the nightly news theme. Even more exciting when you slow it down, isn't it? What? Excuse me. Uh, our next guest this evening, uh, Mr. John Dooley. John, where are you, sir? John, come on out. Hi, John. Nice to see you, John. Where are you Hi, from? Dave. Uh, I'm from Alexandria, Virginia, right outside of Washington, and I'm currently relocating to Indianapolis. Are you moving to Indianapolis? Right. You, you know I'm the, from Indianapolis. Circle City. Well, stop by my mom's house. Well, I, I'll try. Get yourself a hot meal. And this is... Uh, this is Buford. Have? Buford, and Buford is is uh, kind of a shepherd, but mostly a He's a mutt, shepherd right? and Dobie. He's a Heinz 57. Very, He's very a, nice dog. Oh, excellent. All right, and what will Buford do for us tonight? Uh, Buford is extremely devoted. I've had him since he was a puppy, and what he's going to do tonight is he's going to die for rocks. Buford will dive for die rocks. for rocks. Now, how did you notice? How did you find out that he would go into the water after rocks? I'm really not sure. Uh -huh. He may have seen me passed out in a bowl of soup or something. I, wow. I don't know. He's... That's a pretty good trick in itself. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. So here now, uh, Buford okay. diving for rocks. Okay. You want a drum roll or anything, uh, John? Maybe a Jaws theme. A what? Jaws theme. Jaws theme Jaws. from Jaws, Paul. Okay, Buford. Movie of you. Okay, here we sit go. Down. Sit. <laughs> sit. Buford. Sit down, sit down Buford. Diving sit for down. rocks. Okay. Come on, right. Buford. Go for it. Yeah! 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 Oh my God, Buford! What a guy! What a baby! Go ahead and give it a shot. Come on, Buford, once more. Let's take a look at it in uh, slow motion, instant replay. Buford the dog, showing a tremendous amount of courage, getting into the tank. Yes! Thank you very much, John. Nice to see you. Thanks, Buford. Bye, bye. Ah, you know, you just, you really can't beat the aroma of wet dog. Mm, that. Is there a John Flowers in the house? Mr. Flowers, where are you, sir? Come on out if you're here. John, I remember you from uh, last year, and I'm just going to go right out on a limb and say, this is one of my all-time favorite stupid Thank Petra. You. Nice to see you again. John, where are you from? I'm from Detroit, but I live in Ocala, Florida. Uh-huh, what do you do for a living there? I'm a horse van attendant. A horse van attendant? Right. What does that mean exactly? Well, that means that I load up horses and we take them anywhere in the country. Uh huh. Okay. Just for a ride or for no, a no, purpose? No, no, no. For different. <laughs> for different Get... to different racetracks. Get ready, kids. We're going to Disney World. Yeah. But this, this is Caesar. Right. And uh, what kind of dog is Caesar? He's a Bouvier de Flanders. Bouvier de Flanders. Is, right. Is that an unusual breed? Uh, he's a European cattle dog, and supposedly they're the number one security dogs in the world. Number one security dog in the world. All right. Would we give you anything but the best? He has an amazing trick, and I guess I get to help here, right? Right. All right. Uh, you have to hold this on your leg like so. I hold it, steady it on my leg. Right. How much does Caesar weigh? 93 pounds. All right, 93 pounds of animal here. Come here, kitty. Let's go. Caesar, come on. Get up. Come on, Caesar. Good boy. Oh, come on. Good boy. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Good baby. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, Caesar! Oh, buddy! Caesar! Nicely done. Good to see you again. Thank, Thank you very you. much for being here. Here it is again. Yeah! Thank you, folks. Have a good trip back to Florida. Thank you. Makes that little dog Joey kind of a wimp, doesn't he? Uh, our next uh, guest here tonight on Stupid Petrix, Mr. Tom Thomas. Come on out, Tom. Hi, Tom. How are you? Where are you from, Dave. Tom? Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. What do you do for a living in Phoenix? I publish uh, kind of a biker's Bible. It's a directory. A biker's Bible? It's a directory for races. Well, if I see racing guys who uh, ride racing bikes. Yeah. Okay. And this is uh, your animal here. This is your dog. What kind of dog do we have here? American Pit Bull Terrier. American Pit Bull Terrier. <laughs> and its, uh, its name is? Hammer. Hammer. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and uh, before you turn him loose on the audience, why don't we just rub Bobby up with raw meat and let the dog go? Um, what will Hammer do for us tonight? He's going to teach you how to bowl. Teach us how to bowl. Yep. All right. Is, is Hammer a nice dog? Yeah, he's is real it friendly. Is it sure. Hammer? Yeah, he's real friendly. Never just depends had any on how you raise him. Okay. All right, Hammer. He's a sweet guy, and he has the head the size of a cinder block, which is always yeah. nice. <laughs> yes, he's a sweet. sweet dog. Just a little bad press. Yeah. Each one or two people, and right away, 
It's uh, the people. It's the people that... Hammer will bowl. What do we... I guess this is the paraphernalia over here, right? Uh -huh. Anything I can do for you? No. Nope. All right, the great stage is yours. Go okay. right ahead there, Tom. Come on. Tom and Hammer, the bowling dog. Sit. It's also Sit. a brand of baking soda, isn't it? I believe it is, Paul. Tom okay. and Hammer? Get it. Yeah, I have some... I have some in my refrigerator, and I suggest you do the same. Whoa! Yes! Yes! My God! Nice going, Hammer! Let's take a look here at the slow motion instant replay. Hammer in action. Whoa! There it goes. Here we go, Hammer. One more. Give it one more shot. Here we go. Hike! Attaboy! Oh! <laughs> Okay, there you go. Hammer the pit bull, and he's bowling. Just lob one into the crowd. Look out! Thanks, Tom. We'll be right back, folks. Come here, Hammer. Come on, buddy. Welcome back to our program, ladies and gentlemen. You know, over the last six years, we have welcomed hundreds of stand-up comedians to our late-night program, and our next performer is certainly one of the best. Folks, please welcome a good friend of ours, Richard Lewis. Richard! Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this ain't no bar mitzvah band, let's face it right now. What a treat, happy anniversary, Dave. I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic to be here. I just, uh, what do you wear? What do you wear on an anniversary? I went to a, sh a store, I, uh, Jews for Satan, a thing down the block. <laughs> I have so much on my mind and yet so little to say. That's the problem I have. Uh, I have bad anniversary posture. I wear my pants too high. I feel like my grandfather. He used to wear his pants up to his my forehead. He was, he was like a slacks monster. He looked like a slacks monster. And he used to take me to the uh, radio studio. That's why I'm a little freaked out now. I used to come from Jersey. That was like back in the 50s and 60s. Before, yeah, I know, I know. Just before Bruce, I used to go to school. We, we had no chance. We were chantless. I'd go, oh, Phil, Brian. We didn't know what to say when we walked to school. And, now we can say Bruce, and now, and I used to come in, and he took me, he was a very negative guy, like extremely Rocky Road ice cream, my grandfather, you know, and I, we'd come in, it was like an off day for the Rockheads, they, they danced famous suicide attempts, which is sort of a sad. <laughs> I broke up with so many women up there in that box. I'll tell you right now, it's tougher to date now than it is then. I just, what do you do? I'm a hypochondriac, what do you do? I, I don't, I'm not a sexist, I just, if you meet someone like in a bar, what do you say? Can you say this without feeling like a fool? Look, I'm sorry, I, I, you're very nice, but, do you have anything at all that rhymes with warpies? Can you say that? You know? <laughs> and then before you make love, can you say, look, I swear I don't mean any harm, but can we just boil ourselves before we get into bed? <laughs> you know, shouldn't you know if you're with a woman or a guy if it, that it's wrong? I waste so much time and there were so many warnings. I mean, the first date I pick her up and I said, you look lovely tonight. And she said, don't smother me, scum. You know, right away. <laughs> Then there were Freudian slips from hell. She would say stuff like, uh, vermin, I mean honeybee, those kind of things. <laughs> I want to feel good. You know, look, sex was downhill. It was, I knew I'd walk into the bedroom. I was naked. She would mentally dress me when I walked in. You know? <laughs> 
She wore turtleneck lingerie, which was an embarrassment. <laughs> and a Rupik's bra, which I wasn't proud of. And... You know how you fantasize of you when you're making love sometimes another person? I had to lie there and I made believe that I was someone else. It was a frightening situation. <laughs> and I wanted to cuddle. Can't you cuddle? I just, it's frightening not to be able to cuddle. I just, I mean, I, she, she insisted that we would sleep perpendicular to one another, you know? And <laughs> I want to cuddle. We slept in a knife and fork position. It was a frightening thing. <laughs> I'm pacing, I feel like a gorilla in a, in a Yiddish circus here. I don't know what I'm doing here. How far can I go? Am I still on NBC if I go here? Oh, good, that's cool. <laughs> you can't be hot all the time, can you? I mean, sex can go down the drain. I mean, you can't, I mean, it's, it, I mean when you start playing games, it's a nightmare. Like, oh, hey, tonight, you be the caterer, I'll be the insurance man, you know? And <laughs> I come in with Chef Boyardee hats, and then, you know, I went south already, you know, and, uh, I don't know, I just don't know what, what do you do? What do you, I just, I, I can't perform anymore. I just, I have trick knees, I read all these manuals. Uh, position nine, A divided by B, you're in bed, your wife's holding a wok, you know, it's kind of a, I can't, are we making love? Are you still in the neighborhood now? What's happening here? If I ever write a sex manual, I'd probably, I don't know, I'd call it, ow, you're on my hair. That's what I would call. <laughs> I just, I don't know, you know, I just, I want to be able to be me. I can't make love and talk. I, I need like Bill Wendell in the bedroom going, Richard and Sharon are having a wonderful time. I can't express myself. <laughs> I become like Jerry Lewis. I can't express feelings while I'm making love. I go, but Hal Hellman, I, oh my God. There's that Jerry Lewis from Hell puppet that comes into my face. So I, I want to be, I want to have some soul. I want to be like Barry White, Al I want to be able to make love and go, ah, I love you. Ha, ha, you are everything to me. Ah, you are my life. Ah, you are my soul. So I got my Barry White tapes, I'm practicing. I'm cool when I'm alone. While I'm in the act, I'm so great. I love you. You are my life. You are my soul. And as soon as I'm satisfied, hey, uh, any more frozen waffles in the freezer? Uh, <laughs> you want to feel good. You want to feel loved. She called me by pet names. It was a nightmare. She meant well, but it doomed me. You know, you want to hear, take me, want me. You got to feel hot. She says, I love you. Take me, want me. Little goober. She called me little goober. <laughs> You don't need little goober, you know. And I blame my family. I know they made love, and I know they, they, I hope they had joy, but they covered it up. It was like Watergate. They were a hundred yards under the house. If you're gonna make love, you could just squeal and have a ball, you know. They covered it up. My father, he would, he would shout, and he would go like this. Uh, that's gin. He would say, that's gin. <laughs> I gotta go. Happy anniversary, Dave. <laughs> this is good. Nice job, Richard. My Thank pleasure. you very much for helping us out. Oh, anytime. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Richard Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, have to do another commercial. We'll be right back, folks. Time for my song? Yes. All right, good. Definitely. You know the lyrics and everything. Yeah, that thing from Cats, right? Okay, yeah, okay. you'll be doing. You know, folks, when uh, we put this little anniversary program together, we found out that one of our staff members actually used to be a, a tour guide here at Radio City Music Hall and probably knows more about this place than anyone else around. So we're going to chat with him now for a second. Please welcome our own Chris Elliott. Chris? <laughs> It's, uh, as always, great to see you. Thank you very much for stopping uh, by, Chris. Thanks a lot, and congratulations. Ten years, that's terrific. Yeah, that's it's actually, actually been six years. It's been what? Six, six years. I guess it just feels like ten years. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, you know everything about the building. Give us some facts. For example, how many seats are, oh, are we geez. looking at here in the radio? Well, you know, about? I was a tour guide a long time ago, but uh -huh. let me see if I think it was about 50, 75. 50 to 75. Seats. 
Geez, I don't, I don't know for a fact, but it looks like there's a lot more. Yeah, you'd think that, wouldn't yeah. you? You know what it is? It's the, um, it's the high ceilings. Oh, They're about right. 30 feet high, yeah. and uh, that gives the impression gives of a lot more seats. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's a huge place. How do they heat this facility? It's uh, oil, heat, hot water baseboards. Uh -huh. That's really... Uh, <laughs> Jeez, I had, I had no idea. That's, uh, yeah, no it's the most, it's so cozy, yeah, yeah. It's the most efficient yeah. way to do uh, it. And w when did they build this? 1977. Um, <laughs> It was built for the uh, premiere of the John Travolta film, Saturday Night Fever. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. They, don't, they hardly do anything here yeah. anymore well, now. Well, no, they do uh, concerts, they have big events, they have uh, every year the annual Christmas show runs about six weeks. Christmas show? Yeah. No. <laughs> Dave, this place shuts down on the holidays. Come on. <laughs> no, I think uh, once a month on the weekends, the National Guard uses it as an armory. But oh. I think that's about it. Well, Listen, that's Dave, something, yeah. I got to go. Before I do, yeah. I sincerely want to congratulate you. Thank you, you very much. It's uh, awfully nice of you. Some wonderful years, you and Paul, and all the terrific work you've done. Yeah. And on behalf of myself and all the local Coca-Cola bottlers, I'd like to uh, present you with this check for $50. Right there you go. Congratulations. That's very nice. Next year, we hope to do better. Right, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when I was chosen at random from the Indianapolis phone book to host a nightly TV show, I asked myself, what do the American people want to see on television? And the answer came to me in a flash, cheap stunts and plenty of them. So it's with great pride that we present some of those cherished moments now from past programs. When you work here at NBC, one of the things you do a lot is ride in elevators. And since a lot of sports originated from real life activities, there is no better sport for this building than, of course, elevator races. It looks like something great is going to happen, doesn't it? <laughs> Here we go. I'll get down in it. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Hazelton, can we go in and talk to the driver, Hal? Just go right in there. Excuse me, sir. What is your name, please? John. I'm sorry I didn't hear that. John Simpson. Don? John. John, where are you from? Hazelton, Pennsylvania. Hazelton, Pennsylvania. How long, how long a drive is that? How long? Yeah. Oh, about 10 years. <laughs> I don't know. Geez, well, you, you probably want to freshen up then. Uh... OK, give me a second here. I want to check this out and see what's going on in the control room. Just take a second. Oh, <laughs> here's the deal. I completely forgot about it. Look. <laughs> it's Wednesday night. Wednesday night is dog night here in the control room. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for being so impatient. You're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Can I take off the old uh, hat? Oh, boy. Oh, this is... This is unpleasant already. We've just hit... Oh! Equator. All right, so that's what they're doing. They're right over there. The prime time today show. And are they doing something now? Okay. <clears throat> See what we can do. Go ahead, Carl. Take a look out there. Let me... Attention, attention, people of New York City. My name is Lawrence Grossman, the president of NBC News. This prime time program was my idea, and I'm not wearing pants. Welcome to New York. Sometimes called Fun City. <laughs> How is it? And where, where are you from? From the eastern shore of Virginia. Oh, do you have any questions about New York? <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't easy, that's for sure. Did you have a snack? <laughs> well, won't you please? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Thank you so much. It's nice of you to do. Wasn't that Julie Walters good? Uh, nice, She's yeah? great. I love her new show on the Fox Network. No, that's uh, that's Tracy Ullman. Oh. Different person yeah, altogether. Yeah. She's great, too. Yeah, she's Tracy very good. Tracy Ullman is. Yeah. What? What? Who's coming in? Hi, Tom. Just Let a second. Know, what are you doing? We've got to get some ice. Program. Just some ice. We'll be out of here in a second. Sorry, Tom. We'll be right. Do me a favor. Get into the fountain. Get into it? Come on, get in. If, if you get fired, I'll get you a job, honest. Just stand in the fountain. <laughs> Come on over and just stand in there. Come on. All right. Put, put, put the phone down, for God's sakes. All right, now just get in. Come on. And sadly enough, he was electrocuted. We'll be right back, folks. Sponsored in part by Diet Dr. Pat. That's, uh, that's it, folks. We're nearly out of time. I just want to say one thing. The Miami Beach audiences are the greatest audiences in the world. <laughs> uh, I want to thank everybody who was here tonight. First, of course, you folks. I really appreciate you sending in for tickets and showing up here tonight. Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody who watches our uh, regular show uh, Monday through Friday at 12.30. We certainly appreciate that. Of course, I want to thank Paul and the band again and uh, this wonderful group here tonight. Thank you all very much. Bill Wendell, and a special thanks to everybody on the staff and crew of Late Night with David Letterman. We'll try and keep it flying for another year. Thank you very much, folks. Good night. Thank you, Paul. When I first walked on the moon, no, no. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, I don't work all that hard at my job, so occasionally I like to try and do something really stupid to make up for it. This, uh, this what you see here is a suit made of Velcro, and behind me we have a wall made of that same miracle fabric of the 80s. Pretty much anything will stick to this. You just heave it up there and you're in business. It just... So... Uh, we did this a couple of years ago, and we thought we would try and recreate it for you tonight. And uh, I'd like to keep one thing in mind. If for some reason this doesn't work properly, if for some reason this is not as entertaining as it ought to be, if for some reason it disappoints you, please keep this in mind. What did you pay for the tickets?
Are we ready? Anton. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 yikes. Morning, Chef.